That truck was done originally uh, full size by the effects crew out at uh, Kaiser Steel, the old Kaiser Steel facility in Fontana. The gag was uh, that it was supposed to kind of flip over on its side and then slide toward camera. So they, they got a hold of a tanker truck and filled one side of the tank all the way along with concrete and uh, rigged some sort of a cannon device to uh, uh, flip it over with a Yuki pole and a bag of gunpowder. And uh, so they got it up to speed and hit the cannon and the truck flipped over and rolled two or three times and almost put the driver in the hospital. So they could really only use the head of that shot because it's supposed to flip over on its side and then slide toward camera. So it fell upon uh, Gene Warren and, and, and the crew at, at Fantasy II to finish the shot. So we had to match the background, build a uh, whatever scale it was, uh, um, six scale or eight scale a miniature set for the thing with a roadway with a hidden track that we could slide the truck on, built a miniature truck and uh, with some body parts in the front that were made of sheet lead so that they could crumple realistically the way the, the live action one does. And basically uh, with uh, smoke coming out of the exhaust and sparks coming out from underneath. And Jim Cameron was very fussy about those sparks. He wanted orange sparks. He didn't want little pyro looking sparks that are usually white, you know, uh, from pyrotechnic devices underneath. He wanted to see orange sparks because it's steel grinding on pavement. It's got to be orange. So we had little Th things with Allen screws and servos and little, um, I think we used little Makita motors uh, with a little grindstone and an Allen screw that would feed down onto the grindstone and be held there by a spring while the little grindstone spewed out these orange sparks. And it was a lot of work, but it actually succeeded. And I think uh, Joe Viscosal put some uh, black match into the tailpipe, which you would have to light each time. And and the truck comes toward us with the smoke coming out, flips over, slides toward camera. Perfect. After about 20 takes, I think we got it. Because Gene is, Gene is a very demanding guy. Gene wants exactly everything to be on cue and perfectly, you know, perfectly done. So a lot of late nights on that until we got it. But uh, everybody was happy in the end. And I also built the uh, large chrome-plated tank that uh, you see in the movie Crushing over all the little miniature human skulls and, and stuff. The original one that Mike Joyce and I think Gary Rodeback worked on in the first movie it was just silver paint. And this time Cameron decided that it has to actually look exactly like chrome because they're using laser weapons and he wanted the tank to um, be reflective so that it would bounce off anybody's attempt with the laser weapon to, uh, to disable it. So that was its defensive armament was this brilliant reflectivity. So we had the whole thing vacuum metalized afterwards, which meant you had to handle it with kid gloves, but it, it was pretty damn shiny.